Want to get more sales out of the lead that you already have? One of the best things that you can do is make sure that the person selling your stuff is sold on your stuff. I'm going to tell you what that means and give you an example of how I did it with a sales team that I ran. Hey, I'm Ray Green. Uh, hey, I'm Ray Green. Hey, I'm Ray Green. God damn it. Hey, I'm Ray Green, former executive turned nomad entrepreneur. And today I'm going to say you want to boost your sales? If you're in a service business, one of the questions that you really want to ask yourself is the person who's selling my services to my clients, do they really, really believe in what they're selling? When they take somebody's money, they're going to be contributing to changing someone's life or changing someone's business. Or do they say, all right, sucker. If the person selling your services is any less than a hundred percent certain, absolutely sure, and truly believes that they are going to be changing someone's life or changing someone's business, it's going to come through in their sales. It's going to be projected. And again, it could even be unconsciously, but sales is all about the transference of emotion, the transference of belief, the transference of conviction. You can't transfer it to the person that you're selling. And worse, if you have doubt, that's what you're transferring. Like you are projecting that lack of confidence onto the prospect or onto the future client. That's going to cost you a lot of deals. Now, one of the things you want to do, if you have somebody selling services for you, is you say, how can I get them to believe? Like, how can I prove that what we do really works? If it does, and you know it does, the question you may want to ask yourself is, how can I inject that sense of confidence and that same belief and that same sense of conviction into the person that's selling my stuff. It reminds me of a story when I was managing a sales team years back, one of the teams that I ran, we did political fundraising and we raised you know, over a hundred million dollars between my teams and I. One of the issues that we were calling on was at the time, this is years ago, it was an issue called card check. All right, now just table politics for a second. Think about this just from a sales standpoint. Union bosses were lobbying or advocating for a change of the rules that allowed them to require people to vote on ballots for union issues in front of the union boss. They were allowing people to vote in front of union bosses instead of a secret ballot. And my team was responsible for raising money to help lobby against this issue, to help raise awareness and educate the public and get the word out and, you know, essentially win the campaign and keeping the union bosses from being able to make this rule change. We were doing fine. Like we had, we had good sales. The sales team was incredible. It was a great sales culture. So we were doing okay. It was the Monday morning sales meeting. And I came in and I had a piece of paper and I said, I need to talk to you about Friday afternoons because at the time we had this rule for Friday afternoons. If you were at 120% of plan, you could get a couple hours off. If you were 140% of plan, you could get four hours off. I came in and I said, hey, we've had some abuse of the Friday afternoons. It's kind of on the honor code and I don't really want to have to to micromanage this, but I really need everybody to recommit to what this plan is. And, you know, we all, we all loved the Friday afternoons. I loved it as a manager. I loved it as a rep prior to that. So everybody liked this. I've written down what the rules are here and all I need is for you to just reaffirm that you understand what these rules are and you're not going to abuse this policy that you're not that you're going to adhere to the honor code and you're not going to abuse this policy and i just need you to sign this i walked over to the first person put down a piece of paper with full page of of a font and i said go ahead and sign jeremy looked up at me and he looked down at the paper and he said okay and i handed him a pen okay he said can i can i read it i said do you need to no i, I guess not and I, he signs it and I grab it, take it to the next person, take it to the next person, take it to the next person. Once I got to about 11, 12, 13 people, just want to let you guys know, you just signed away your Friday afternoon off. You just signed away your benefits. You just signed away something that you absolutely love. And people said, what? Like, that wasn't the deal. That's not what you told us. And I said, no, but that is what happens when you allow people in positions of authority to require people or encourage people to sign things in front of them. They have the ability to influence people in a way that's not really fair. Now, do you think this would have gone differently had I walked in and said the exact same speech, like even, even misled you, but gave you that piece of paper and said, I need each of you to walk away and spend a few minutes voting individually. And the team said, yeah, the results would have been, would have definitely been different. And that is why I need you to go out there and kick ass and raise as much money as possible so that we can educate the public on what this rule change is. When your salespeople truly believe 
and what they're selling, the results are going to change. And if they kind of believe, you're going to get kind of good results. And if they don't believe, if they're skeptical, if they're selling shit with few exceptions, there's a few sales sociopaths out there. But for the most part, People don't want the guilt of selling something they don't really truly believe in. But if they don't, I promise you, it's going to be projected. They're going to transfer that lack of belief to their prospects. Does the person selling my services for me truly believe in what we do here? And if the answer is no, or anything less than an absolute hell yes, you want to take a step back and say, how can I demonstrate it? How can I prove it? How can I install or inject that level of conviction, the level of conviction I have as the service provider or as the founder or as the entrepreneur? How can I install that or inject that into the person that I'm selling? You can get creative with it, kind of like I did. There's ways to do it. Using social proof, using testimonials, bringing them to events. If you do in-person events, get creative with it. But once you get that level of conviction, it will change the results. And lastly, of course, if you're the one selling your services, you better believe. If you like this video on sales, I think you'll like this one.